Hello, this is Mr. Ryan for Algebra 2 for the first Monday, 3.30, and we're going to look at section 12.1, Introduction to Sequences, on page 522. So what I want you to do is get out your book and get out a calculator and do the examples with me and the homework with me. If you do this, it'll be just like a classroom experience and you'll learn it. Please do not watch this or this will be useless. So here we start. The definition of a sequence is a function, which we've dealt with, whose domain is the set of positive integers. So let's see what that means. When we look at example one, we can look at it first of all as a function. f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x, which we've dealt with. Now to make this into a sequence, we only use x as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, positive integers. So if we make the function f of x equal x squared plus 3x, and now to turn it into a function, we make it a sub n in place of f of x is equal to n squared plus 3n, where n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive integers. Now we have a sequence and we can find the first, second, and tenth element of that sequence called a1, a2, and a10. So plugging in for n is 1, we have a sub 1 is 1 squared plus 3 times 1 is 4. For a2, or what we would have called f of 2, we have 2 squared plus 3 times 2 is 4 plus 6 equals 10. And for a10, we have 10 squared plus 3 times 10 equals 100 plus 30 equals 130. So now, for example 2, let's write an explicit formula for each sequence, starting with this fraction sequence. So a 1, 2, 3, and 4 will be 2 thirds, 4 fifths, 6 sevenths, and 8 ninths. Now as we look at the second sequence, we can see that it is 2 times n, which is 2, over 2 times n plus 1. So we have 4 over 5, 2 times 2 over 2 times 2 plus 1. For the third sequence member, we have 2 times 3. Remember, 3 is n over 2 times 3 plus 1, which is 6 over 7. For the fourth sequence, we have 2 times 4 over 2 times 4 plus 1, which is 8 over 9. So the general formula for this sequence is a sub n, or any general term, is 2n over 2n plus 1. Now looking at our next sequence, we see the number sequence of negative 1, comma 8, comma negative 27, comma 64. Now if we remember what 8 is, that's 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2. And 27 is 3 times 3 times 3, 3 to the third. And 64 is 4 times 4, 16 times 4, or 64. So that's a sequence that has the cubes. But notice their sign is alternating. So as we look at a sub 1, we have negative 1 to the 1 power times 1 to the 3rd, which is just negative 1. a sub 2 is negative 1 squared times 2 to the 3rd, which is positive 8 a3 is negative 1 to the 3rd times 3 to the 3rd is negative 27, and a4 is negative 1 to the 4th times 4 to the 3rd is 64. Now let's understand this alternating sign, negative 1 power. So negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1, it should be negative 1 there. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, so we're seeing the sign changes. Now negative 1 to the third is 3 negative 1's multiplied together, which is 1 times negative 1 or negative 1, so it's changed again. And negative 1 to the fourth is 4 negative 1's multiplied together, which turns out to be 1 times 1 or plus 1. So we're seeing that negative 1 to the n changes sign from negative to positive to negative to positive as we go from a1 to a2 to a3 to a4. And so that's called a sign changing element. So now the general formula for this function is negative 1 to the n, the sign changer, times n to the third.
Okay. Now, for example three, we want to find the first four terms of the sequence defined recursively using previous elements as a sub n is equal to 3 times n a to the n minus 1 plus 5. Now to put that in English, we would say the current term a sub n is equal to 3 times the last term a sub n minus 1 plus 5. And what we have to be given the first term in order to start, which is going to be a negative 1 for a1. So let's look at how this proceeds. a sub 1 is negative 1. a sub 2 is 3 times the last element shown there, negative 1 plus 5, or 2. a sub 3 is 3 times the last element, 2 plus 5, or 6 plus 5 is 11. a4 is 3 times 11, the last element, plus 5 is 33 plus 5, or 38. Now for example 5, let's write a recursive formula for each sequence. 3 halves, 2, 5 halves, 3. Now if you look at that, you can see this is a plus 1 half sequence. Because all we're doing is adding plus 1 half to each term. Okay? So we could call it a sub n, the general term is a sub n minus 1, the last term, plus a half. Okay, now for this sequence, negative 1, comma 3, comma 9, comma 27, if you look, you see you're multiplying the, the current number by negative 3 to get the next one. So 1 times negative 1 times negative 3 is plus 3, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and negative 9 times negative 3 is plus 27. So this is a times negative 3 sequence, so we could make a sequence general form as b sub n is equal to negative 3 b sub n minus 1. Okay? Negative 3 times the last term. Okay, now this is the homework like we usually do in class, and it's very important that you do this along with me with your calculator. So pause this if you need to and go get your calculator, wherever it is, because you really need to do this. Now what we want to do is we're given four numbers in a sequence and we want to identify how to get the next three. So if we look at 2, 4, 8, and 16 on problem 2, we can see that we're all multiplying by 2 to get the next term. So we would multiply 16 times 2 to get 32, 32 times 2 to get 64, and 64 times 2 to get 128. Now you should be doing those on your calculator. Okay. Now for problem 4, we recognize this from our example, 1, 8, 20, 64 is the first 4 cubes. So we realize that it's 1 cube, 2 cube, 3 cube, 4 cube, so the next 3 would be 5 cubed, 6 cubed, and 7 cubed. Now remember how to do that on your calculator, 5 power 3 would be 125, but really do this with me, 6 power 3 would be 216, and 7 power 3 would be 343. Okay, for problem 6, this is a different one. Our first four numbers are negative 3, 0, 4, 9. Now, as we look at this, this is kind of different from the last, it, or the other two. It's adding 3, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, 0 plus 4 is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, and so we're, in, we're adding 1, to what we increment by each time. So the next one would be 9 plus 6 is 15, 15 plus 7 is 22, and 22 plus 8 is 30. Now this is not a regular sequence, so we're just finding the general pattern here, but we will see that it's not an arithmetic sequence later. Now in 8, we have the recursive formula. We're asked to identify it as recursive or explicit, and recursive, of course, uses the a n minus 1 and sometimes a n minus 2. So that's just identified as a recursive sequence. That's all they want us to do. But 10, a sub n is equal to 3 n squared plus 3 n minus 2, remember, was just like the function we started with. And this is called an explicit sequence since we can make it look just like f of x equals 3 x squared plus 3 x minus 2. Okay? And then problem 12, if we're given the sequence, a sub n is equal to 3 times negative 2 to the n. So plugging in for n now, a sub 1 is 3 times negative 2 to the 1, which is negative 6. 
a sub 2 is 3 times negative 2 squared, which is 3 times 4, 12. And then the tenth one is 3 times negative 2 to the 10. And this is how you would do it on the calculator. 3 times parentheses negative 2, close parentheses, power 10. And we would come up with 3072. It's very important that you use the calculator with me. Okay? Then 14 is a sub n is equal to cosine n pi. Now, before you do this, you'd need to change the mode to radians. Okay? So cosine pi, when you have it in radian mode, is negative 1 for a sub 1. a sub 2 is, let me get this right. A sub 2 is cosine 2 pi, which your calculator will show you is 1. And A sub 10 is cosine 10 pi, which your calculator will show you is 1. That's just 5 times 2 pi. So it's just gone around the circle 5 times. Continuing on problem 16, our next sequence is A sub n is 1 over 4 to the n power. A sub 1 would be 1 over 4 to the 1 or 1 fourth. A sub 2 would be 1 over 4 squared, or 1 16th. A sub 10, now the way we would do that is we would get 4 to the 10 power first. And that comes out to be the very big number, 1,048,576. So A sub 10 would be 1 over that big number, okay? And so for the next problem, 18, A n, or the current term, is A n minus 1, the last term, plus n. So again, we have to be, giving a start, be given a starting point here. a sub 1 is 1, and a sub 2 is the last term, 1, plus n is 2, so 3. And a sub 3 is the last term, 3, plus n is 3, equals 6. And a sub 4 is the last term, 6 plus 4, equals 10. Now 20 is a little bit harder because we're going to say a sub n is 3 times the last term minus 2 times the next to the last term, where a1 is 5 and a2 is negative 1. So plugging in, a3 is 3 times a2 minus 2 times a1, which is 3 times negative 1 minus 2 times 5, and that is negative 3 minus 10, or negative 13. Now, a sub 4 is 3 times the last term, a3, minus 2 times a2. So, a4 is 3 times the last term, negative 13, minus 2 times negative 1, which is a2. And that's negative 39 plus 2 is negative 37. And a5 now is 3 times a4 minus 2 times a3, and that would be 3 times negative 37 the last term minus 2 times negative 13, the next to last term, which would be on your calculator now, negative 111 plus 26 would be negative 85. Okay, now 22 is a sub n is a, the last term, a sub n minus 1, over the next to last term, a sub n minus 2, where a1 is 1 and a2 is 2. So now we would have a3 is a2 over a1, which is 2 over 1 or 2. a4 is equal to a3 over 2, which is 2 over 2 or 1. And a5 is a4, the last term, over a3, the next to last term, or 1 over 2. Okay, so now 24 says to state the next term and write a recursive formula for the sequence negative 3 times comma 9 comma negative 27 comma 81. Now that's clearly a negative times negative 3 sequence because I can multiply each term by negative 3 to get the next term. So if we're asked for the fifth term, which we are, it would be the fourth term, 81 times negative 3, which on your calculator will show up as negative 243. And to put it in general form, we would have a sub n is equal to negative 3 a sub n minus 1. Now, the last problem for our homework, 26, is the sequence 1.1, this 1.11, 1.111, and the fourth term, of course, would be 1.41, 1.1111. 
Now the general term from that would be a sub n equals the last term a sub n minus 1 plus 0.1 to the n. So let's see how that works on the fourth term, the one we were given to find. a sub 4 is equal to a sub 3, which is 1.31s plus 0.1 to the 4, which is, as we can see, 0 0.0001, giving us that fourth one. So that makes up the 1.1111. And this completes section 12.1, and this is as close to classroom as I could possibly get it. God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow.